I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Degenerate, yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window? I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Welcome to Graybo's Giblets, part of the NoOffseason.com Sports Card Network. We know you don't have 40 hours per week to pour over podcasts and spreadsheets to handicap these games yourself. We do that for you and bring you our picks each week so you can have some confidence heading into the weekend or walking up to the window. We're out here dropping giblets. I'm your host, Graybo, and I'm joined by always Danny One Time and Fitz to break down this week. Week 14 of the NFL slate. How we doing, gentlemen? It's getting closer and closer to the playoffs. I'm a little sad that college football regular season is over. I hit a few of my futures. Hashtag Miami of Ohio, LFG. My kids will have a better Christmas because of the uh, Red Hawks from Miami. But, hey, we're not going to cry over college football being over. We stand on business here. We're ready for NFL weekend. Let's go. We smile because it happened. That's right. And uh, we're going to have a, a bowl podcast to talk hey, about kind of our last week and our uh, overall standings, and we'll do some bowl predictions for the people. Big time, big time. And so uh, it's not quite over yet. We'll have, we'll have one more. Real quick before we get into it, anything to say about Florida State and uh, Alabama? Anything top four, Michigan, Washington, Texas, Bama? Pretty interesting. I'm not like angry or anything about that, but I do feel sorry for Florida State. What do we have to say about that? I think it's a little confusing what the committee did. I still think Georgia should be in there. So they basically went with what they thought the best four teams were. But then if you look at like the sports books and the odds and stuff, Georgia is better than Washington, right? So they'd be favored by a touchdown. Ohio State would be favored. Uh, against a couple teams, probably Texas too. They didn't put the most deserving because Florida State got left out. So I've seen like some of the conspiracies, which you know are always fun to 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 look at and go in you know, down the, the rabbit hole. But it's it's interesting that Texas and Alabama are in there, in my opinion. That's how it feels to me. I feel it's about the the money, the product that they want to see. Um, it, I think it's criminal to leave out Florida State. Um, they played LSU, beat them. They won all their games during the Power Five conference. Uh, but if you leave out Alabama or the SEC in general, I, I feel like that's a crime. <laughs> so I think we were we were going to be arguing about it. It you know is Georgia one of the best four teams? Absolutely. Is Ohio State one of the best four teams? Probably. So it's sad. But next year we'll have more we'll have more options. Next, I can't wait. I think you know with the twelve teams format. All these teams get in, obviously. You'll still, you're still arguing over 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. But I think it'll be fun. I think they should make it mandatory that, you know, if you go undefeated like a Liberty or a JMU or a team like that, they should get in. You know, that should be mandatory. You go undefeated, you get in. I think it's got to be a rule. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think it's going to be a lot better watching Bama versus Michigan um, than Florida State, Michigan. But the way the committee came out and said, Florida State is just a different team <laughs> without Jordan Travis. Like the they have an elite defense, so you're saying none of like these guys busted their ass to win with a third string quarterback in the AC championship. Their defense let up let only six points, and then you're just like, sorry, you're not, yeah. you're not good. It sucks. Any other sport ever take into account an injury when like deciding who gets to move on? That like that doesn't happen in any other sport. Imagine the NCAA tournament, best player gets hurt. They go thirty and two, and you're not a one seed because yeah. your, your guy gets hurt. You're a four seed. That makes no sense. That to me is the that's the stupidest argument. So that goes back to what you're saying. It's just about money. It's about people are going to pay more money to travel and watch Alabama play than than a you know broken down Florida State. So if if they downgraded Florida State so much because of that injury, why are they number five? Why are they? <laughs> why is why are they had Georgia why right? Are, why, aren't, why aren't they fifteenth? You know, why are they? They shouldn't be ahead of Georgia if they downgrade them that much. They haven't lost yet this year. Do you know that? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. The defense is so, like, fun to watch. If you watch that Louisville game, they were overpowering. They're so good. They basically they won the game. The defense just won the game by themselves. It didn't matter. Like, they don't even need the ball. Just punt the ball, play defense. Punt the ball, play defense. It would have right. been interesting if they would have won, like, 
thirty to nothing. <laughs> what the committee would have yeah. would have done there. I, the quarterback I, looked like doo doo. I think that ACC champ. If they didn't play ACC championship, they were in. Like they were just like this game's canceled, postponed. They're in. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> You're saying just because like the quarterback, the quarterback was so bad, yeah. they were like these guys have yeah. no chance. And they kept this. saying this does not look like a you know an offense that should be in the playoff. The defense does blah blah blah. But again, I don't think that matters that they didn't lose any. Right, like you said, we could argue this all day, but let's get to the NFL. Let's get to the board. The people want to hear the picks. We are giving our top three bets this week. The board is uh, I was hearing Fitz talk a little bit. He doesn't like it, but I love it. Going back to last week, we got some good records. I think we were very good. I think, Denny, you said we were 6-3 and three as a group. Make the odds moan. <laughs> Denny, overall, is now 20-18-1. and one. You're a bouncing bat. Went 2-1 and one again last week. Hit the Dolphins and Chargers. Chargers 6 nothing win to cover that 5.5. Beautiful. The Cowboys didn't cover, but they got the good win. Um, so who are you going with this week? Just remember the emotion you guys had in your belly when I picked the Chargers minus five and a half, and they went six to zero. <laughs> I oh, Fitz had them too. So, all right, this week it's a really weird week. I'm taking all dogs, I'm taking. <laughs> are you ready? I think the first time I've ever said this out loud. I'm taking the Bears, getting three and a half versus the Lions. Our darling, the Lions. I do think. I think the Lions are a little dinged up. I think they're trending a bit down. Bears trending a bit up. I think the Bears will be able to run the ball. Um, and they're getting more than uh, more than a field goal. So give me the Bears. Uh, one of my favorite bets of the week. Ready? The Panthers. How about Ooh, that? That's nasty. Ooh. So we got a weird dynamic Yikes. here with the Saints. The Saints uh, lost three in a row. The Saints um, on offense, you know, cars dinged up. No Michael Thomas. Um, Olave is going to be covered by J.C. Horn. Uh, that's one of the Panthers' like few bright spots, right? Is that star corner? Shahid is dinged up, and so I've been looking for some weird futures on all the other Saints like pass catchers, like At Perry and and Lynn Bowden. I, I mean, if you give me if you find me a Lynn Bowden prop like, <laughs> over over zero point five receptions, I'm going to bet it. So I, I just think it's a good spot for the Panthers Panthers to hang hang close, and they're getting five and a half. So I like it. And finally, I like the Raiders at home getting a field goal against the Vikings. The Raiders have played pretty well since the coaching change. The only two games they've lost were to really good teams, and they're getting a field goal at home. So, the dogs, yep. the dogs are out. All right, Fitz, twenty-two, seventeen, and one overall. The Titans were your only loss. That was heartbreaking. Yeah. I I bet that it wasn't one of my three picks, but I definitely had the Titans money line. And then the Lions covered the minus four. Uh, the Chargers minus five and a half, like we talked about with Denny. Got that six nothing victory. So, your three this week. Who are you going with? Yeah, I don't like the board necessarily. So I got one side, two totals for you. Total guy. Browns minus three versus the Jags. <clears throat> I think it's got to be Flacco, right? Yeah, it uh, doesn't matter to me. Flacco or DTR against CJ Beathard, Forty Nine er legend. He's just he's just not. He's just not the guy to get it done. It's going to be a weather game. R.I.P. Uh, to uh, Christian Kirk's testicles. Ooh, tough, tough break there. A lot of uh, a lot of torsion. A lot of fantasy <laughs> owners were upset about that one. A lot of, tough break for some fantasy owners. First play, right? Yeah, At least he got him thirty yards. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and a point if you're PPR. Yep. First time I've said Bears on this podcast and testicles on the same podcast. Just want to a, note that it's a breakthrough. Yeah, so I, I like the Browns to get it done against the Jags. Should be a uh, should probably be a low scoring affair as well. The Jags defense looks pretty bad, so I think Kareem Hunt and Jerome Ford will will have a day. Probably won't want to make Flacco or DTR do too much. I'm going to go strictly weather here for these next two. I'm going to take two unders the the two games that are expected to get the most wind and the most rain on the East Coast. It's going to be the Rams at the Ravens. Under 40, and the Texans at the Jets under 34. Zach Wilson under center again. I don't think we have to worry about too many points. Yikes. Guys. Poor guy. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to play. <laughs> now you got to play. <laughs> so only because I don't like sides this week, really. Some of the some of the lines are a little weird to me, so I'm going to just take some others. I love it. I don't want to play. It's cold out. <laughs> oh, all right. So going for my picks. 
I am 24-16 overall. Standing all business. That's right. The Rams-Browns was my uh, my big loss. Uh, the Rams put up 36 by themselves, so lost that under 40. But the Texans, man, they're wagging. Uh, got it minus three and a half. Got that stop on the last drive. And then the Lions minus four was a win as well against the Saints. I'm going with Minshew Mania. I think Browning had a good game. I think there's a little fool's gold, though. Colts are plus one and a half. I like the money line, but I'm going to take the points. Minshew Mania, Zach Moss looks good. They're giving him the ball like 20 times a game. He couldn't get in the freaking end zone last week for our DraftKings, but they they trust him. Michael Pittman and Minshew are starting to develop a connection. He is an absolute beast. Their offense looks pretty good. And the Colts' defense, I like to pressure Browning. Uh, the offensive line for the Bengals, not that great. So I like the Colts to get to the quarterback and get this win outright. How good is that coach? Oh, he's very good. So who do you give coach of the year? Him. Or Texans? Mm. That's it tough. Beast. But yep. like, he has C.J. Stroud, who's proven to be a very I, good I, I agree. I agree Colts with you. have nothing. M- they either. haven't had Taylor for half the year. Yeah, I, I, I would go with either one of those guys because my next pick, the Texans by a three, three and a half. They have not lost for me. Knock on wood. These guys are absolute dogs. Tank Dell is out, but CJ Stroud is the guy. And I'm sure we'll talk about cards with him. Might be a little too late to go get his cards, but if you have them, might be a great time to sell. People want this guy. Stroud, easily rookie of the year. Talking to our buddy, what do you call, what do you call Mike Bay? <laughs> Mikey Bangers. Mikey Bangers. Big Jets fan, has season tickets, lives here in Richmond, goes up for the games. Hasn't been going a lot. Has been selling the, selling the tickets because of the Jets year. But it was like, I'm going this this week for one person. It wasn't any Jets. It was C.J. Stroud to throw all over the Jets. And like my buddy Fitz said, my business partner, Zach Wilson is starting, and the Texans are only minus three and a half. So let's go, Texans. And then the last one, weather game. Rams getting seven and a half against the Ravens. I think the Ravens are a little bit overrated, in my opinion. Um, that's just me. Could be a bad take. But I, I like the Rams to cover that in this game. And like Fitz said, it's under 40. Not a lot of points. So they're getting seven and a half. The offense is starting to click with Cooper Cup and Puka. Kyron Williams is back. Absolute workhorse. The defense is getting better uh, throughout the year. Much improved. Their coach is a plus coach, so I like the Rams to be prepared uh, to go into Baltimore and cover. Don't necessarily think they will win, but I think it's you know a field goal, so they will have a chance to win. So I like the Rams seven and a half. But weird week, so you got to get weird. And those are my three. Let's go to props, our favorite. And remember, you can get ten percent off any purchase at graybos.co by using the promo code strategy twenty. 23. You can also go to Whatnot. We are fully on Whatnot, the Graybos crew, Monday through Thursday. Get $15 on Whatnot by joining through whatnot.sportscardstrategy.com. Props. We stink at props. 0 and 3 week for the boys. Not great, Bob. Duke is overall 4 and 10. He went back to Warren. Over 78 and a half rushes, he's shaking his head. Over 78 and a half rushing and receiving yards. He had. I didn't know Pickett was going to get hurt in like the first minute. He finished with 55 total yards, dude. Yeah. And he had 59 rushing yards. I was long on. So he had four receiving. I was uh, long on the Steelers in general offensively last week, and then Pickett goes down and they just lay an egg. But I, I just think Pickett is not good. Either, yeah, I he's a he might be a little step up than Mister B- Mister Brisky looked really bad. So, yeah, I say a step up. It's still better to have your starting quarterback <laughs> than your second string quarterback, regardless of who they are, because the guy's starting because they think he's a little bit better. We, we have to go three and over the people. Oh, oh, we about to. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. All right, you got a good one. So this week, I actually have a couple of things I like this week. Usually, I, I tell you. First of all, I'm not a prop better. Okay. I don't fancy I pretend to know a lot of things. This is not a thing I pretend to be good at. So I do the props for fun <clears throat> with you guys. So usually I have don't have much of a, a leaning for anything. 
I am going to look, as I mentioned, for some Elijah Moore props. Or did I, maybe I didn't say that. Maybe I thought that. So let's talk about Elijah Moore. If Joe, Fl- if Joe Flacco is playing quarterback, I like Elijah Moore. Uh, they have this weird connection back from the Jets. And if you guys remember, Elijah Moore was a good receiver for the Jets. They don't look for him in Cleveland until Joe Flacco plays. If you watched him last week, every time, the la- especially down the stretch, whenever – Flacco dropped back. He was looking for more first. And we, you and I know this, Gray, because we needed Elijah Moore to get like two more catches to bank a, a GPP. Amari Cooper might not be playing right. either. Yeah. So, yeah. Love this pick. Yeah. DFS value. DFS value, um, like props, whatever. But DK doesn't have Elijah Moore props yet. They might add them by Sunday. So I'm going to keep watching. So until that day comes, we'll been, again, going back to the Saints and their situation with possibly a dinged up or not starting quarterback with a bunch of dinged up receivers and their best receiver getting shadowed by JC Horn. You know, there are probably several props to be had for the saints right right now. I think I'm going (coughs) Kamara over 34 and a half receiving yards because if you're dropping back, no one's open. What are you doing? You're dumping it down to Kamara. His last five games, Kamara has 51 yards, 44, 33, 50 and 58. Again, his his over under thirty four and a half. So really, if you stay healthy, he'll he'll get there. I would push back here. Mm-hmm. Normally, you would dump it off, but if Jameis Winston's under center, he he's forcing that thing downfield. You know that, <laughs> and that probably is why the prop is so low. Uh, he uh, Jameis does like uh, something that's not normal a lot. So yeah. yeah, that's a fair point. So funny when the car threw like that pick. For the Lions to go up fourteen nothing, you see Carr like deep in thought, like looking at that playbook, and Winston is just like trying to pat him on the back. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty good bit. He's a national treasure. He, <laughs> he really is. is, dude. When I'm not watching Justin Bieber YouTube videos, like, like y'all caught me watching today, I'm watching James Winston videos, like all his highlights, interview highlights, his, his workout videos. Have you seen those? <laughs> yeah. Things? yeah. Yeah. The, a good pro, another good prop is uh, I think Fitz, you did this for all the backup quarterbacks that were playing. He's good for interception. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, if you want to win a prop, Winston's over for yeah. interceptions. Maybe even first play of the game. I actually have to give you props. I didn't like Kamara DFS last week, and he actually helped us out. So. Yeah, he good, was good a pick, good week. pick, Good pick last week. We just need more Sam Laporta, but we'll talk about that later. I told you not to play him, but he scored. Twice. He did score twice. Yeah, we should have played him. It's okay. Hey. 5,600. I'd say 2020. Yeah. I just, we'll I, talk about that in the DFS we will, section. We will, we okay. will. I'm just, we had a good week, but we just like broke even. Yeah, we needed two more. We needed more Sam Laporta, or we needed Elijah Moore to have two more catches. We might have been or, or, more, or Russ, just to not throw three picks and throw another touchdown. But anyways. Anyways. That was last week. Fitz, it's Fitz time. He had Timmy Boyle over 177 and a half passing yards. He finished with 148 because he got pulled. Fitz is 6-8 and eight overall. He had the DeVito win. The Boyle was on track to win. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Simeon, you're coming in. Because guess how many yards Simeon threw for? 66. He would have cruised. cruised. Yep. That's how big of a mush I am. That a guy. <laughs> I think he got to like, I don't know what happened. He threw like a screen that lost a ton of yards. He was, <laughs> he was 12 yards away at one point, I think, when I texted him. Well, and then he got pulled, and then within 72 hours was cut. He went I from apologize. starting quarterback to not on a team. Yeah. In a couple of days. I'd like to formally apologize to the Boyle family for, <laughs> for what I've done here. Uh, this week, I'm going to go with Roshan Johnson, who's back in the fold in Chicago last week. Took over the snap share, took over the rushing share from our boy Herbert. His rushing total is 14 and a half. That seems like... That's scary. That's crazy low. That's so they must low. think that but it's Foreman and Herbert are healthy, right? So yep. the, the the odds makers are thinking they're going to get the majority. You're thinking and, and, and Fields runs least. a lot. Yeah, Fields You're thinking takes Roshan's going to get a third of the snaps, half yeah. the snaps, right? I, oh, I think he gets over fifty percent okay. of the snaps, and I think they just want to see more Roshan Johnson at this point in the season, right? Yeah. Like, what's form? What's getting Foreman work going to do for them? He's good. Roshan Johnson's good. I like this bet, especially if you think he's getting over fifty percent. I'm pounding that then. Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> I thought he said good. But <laughs> standing on business. He's not standing on business on that one. All right. Keenan Allen, I went back to him over 89 and a half. I mean, it was a 6 nothing game. He still had six receptions, but only got to 58. 
Uh, are we worried about Herbert and the Chargers? What is going uh, on? Yeah. What is going Been on? Been done worried. What is going on? They did win last week. Let's get get, get rid of this coach. So I'm seven and nine overall. I'm going with some touchdown props. We're going to take all these as single as well. We want to also make it a parlay. The one I'm not taking as a single is McCaffrey because it's just you don't get value on that. But we're going to add it into the touchdown parlay. The three single ones that I'm taking are going to be Keenan Allen. I love him to get a touchdown this week. Bounce back. Zach Moss. I mean, this guy got so many carries around the goal line. They just couldn't punch it in. Had some holding calls as well. That was another DFS. Oh, so angry. And Pacheco is a beast. Uh, for the Chiefs, he's going to punch it in again this week. So take that uh, and then add C-Mac with all three of those guys for any time touchdown. That's a nice little parlay for some good money. And I think all four of them get in. So is that that's what I'm going separate bets for you or one parlay bet? So I did, three se- I did three separate bets with Alan Moss Pacheco. Okay. Then I add McCaffrey to those three for a parlay. And you're, and you're going to remember this for next week? Yeah. To see if you hit it or not for your record? Correct. Okay. All right. Correct. I believe you. Who put who puts these together? Who keeps track of the records? Who put this thing together? Me. That's who. All right. So let's get into the DFS. We had a good week. We ended up pretty much uh, breaking even, but there was. I mean, I mean we were there were some two good catches sweats. from Bankin. Like we come in, came in fourteenth in a in a GPP, and again we needed like literally two more catches, yeah. and we win we win the whole thing. So there was there were some great sweats. Uh, we had a Tua Hill combo, Purdy was unbelievable. We just should have used a lot more of them. And uh, I even mentioned, you know, swapping Purdy for uh, going against Russell and going Purdy, but we kind of went even with both because I was still like, Russ is really good value. Pittman, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Purdy had a pretty good week. Purdy was awesome. Pittman was awesome. And then kind of the lows, Russell with the three picks and throwing that pick at the end really killed us instead of a touchdown. Ramondre getting hurt in the first drive. Scary Terry did not have a freaking catch. He was in one of our best lineups. You don't know if you realize he that. with Terry, Terry getting, getting a zero. zero. Yeah. And then Zach Moss not getting in the freaking end zone. And we uh, had a ton of them in a big percentage, which a lot of people did. So it didn't really hurt us. But it just would have been nice if he could uh, help us out a little bit. So I feel like we're trending. We had, a, we had a meeting Sunday morning. I felt like that was a good meeting. I feel like we need to do that more. Like when the players call a player-only meeting? Yeah. We, we had a meeting. We had to talk about new strategy because something wasn't working and it was a lot better this week. I think we need to keep doing that. And I like our plays this week. Duke at quarterback. We have no Dolphins this week. So no Tyreek, no Tua. What are we doing at quarterback? If you look at the top of the the board, you know, it's from a point total. You know, the Mahomes versus Allen matchup is intriguing. And that's, I think that's what, it's going to be a big decision point for folks. Are you taking Mahomes? Are you taking Allen? Um, I'm strongly considering uh, fading those guys and doing more uh, Lamar or, or Justin Fields. I like that. Yeah, just saving a, f- a few bucks. And, um, and I think both those guys have the ability to have a big game. Um, Lions have trouble with a mobile quarterback. So, you know, Fields is a guy I haven't played as much this year on DFS, but I'm going to consider it in this situation. On the cheap end, there are some very interesting dart throws on the cheap guys. Uh, looking at Browning for Cincinnati has actually held up a little better than I thought he would. I've, I've said some unfavorable things about Mr. Browning on this podcast <laughs> when he was in you know, your pants. Yeah. And then look, look at Aiden O'Connell. It's a very weird play there. Uh, he's at home. He's playing the Vikings. He's very low owned. So it's a really, it's a contrarian play from an ownership standpoint. And Devontae Adams is healthy. Once the ball, hey, you never know. I like that. I am, I'm for like fading Mahomes and Allen, but when you see a Mahomes at 7,900, everyone's doubting this guy right now. Coming off that that not a very great game for the Chiefs last week, I think Mahomes is my top guy this week at 7,900. Never thought I would see the day where he'd be under 8,000. So I'll be kicking myself if we don't play him and play some stacks with Rice, who's very cheap. Throw in Kelsey, who hasn't looked great, even though he's going to be hot, and that's a good little stack. I it's love okay. Browning in the Bengals. I think the Bengals and Colts game is a good uh, game stack. Dobbs, Vikings, Raiders, not very good on defense. Dobbs, fighting, fighting for his job right now. 
could be a good bounce back spot, could save a lot of money. I do like going back to Russ Wilson this week. I think uh, it's kind of like last week when I said, you know, go Purdy instead of Wilson. This week, everyone's going to go Purdy. Go to Wilson. You, you know, everyone, like, even myself, and I don't know if you do this, Duke. If someone burns us, I'm like, we're not playing them. And it's not the thing to do in DFS. Right. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do what happened last week. Do what's going to happen this right. week. Yeah. So I like Russ, and then I really like your Aiden O'Connell play a lot. I think the Vikings and Raiders is a very good sleeper game to get fantasy points. Running back. There's one guy. He's very expensive. You got to have him in your lineup. <laughs> Yeah, that, I feel like that's a discussion every week, right? It's like, are we going to spend up <clears throat> for McCaffrey? And most weeks, he's been worth it. And so that's the decision. Uh, do it or not, 9,200. Um, I'm sure we'll play some of him. <clears throat> I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be above or below market on him, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, Kamara, again, talked about him earlier. Like him a lot. You love him. Pacheco is, is trending up as far as <clears throat> usage, uh, goal line, stuff like that. So I, I do like him against the Bills. Um, or also in that same kind of price range is Josh Jacobs at home against the Vikings. So like if I'm, if I'm playing O'Connell, I'll probably stack him with one of the receivers. And if I'm not playing O'Connell, more likely for me to put uh, Jacobs in there. I like it. There's three guys. We should have at least one of these guys in every one of our lineups. In my opinion, we should have a lot of Christian McCaffrey. You know, that's going to be hard, but he is projected to be, probably six points higher than any other running back this week. That's insane. So it's either C-Mac, I think Zach Moss, again, his value's too good. 20 carries last week, and no more Jonathan Taylor. Again this week, and there's a lot of running backs that are priced high, and he's the only one that gets the same amount of volume as all of these guys, and he's a cash game lock again in Pacheco. Those three guys, you got to have one, in my opinion, in every single lineup. Then there's four others that you can kind of mix. That's Brees Hall. I do like Bijan. I haven't been playing him a lot, but I do like Bijan uh, this week. His price keeps dropping. Javante Williams in the Broncos uh, is a good play. And then Chubba Hubbard is the number one in Carolina. Scored twice last week. Is a good value play. All right, all right, wide receiver. I did the second all right just for you. <laughs> wide receiver. I think, I don't usually say this, but I think Keenan is too expensive for me this week. Um, you liked him as a touchdown prop, which I don't hate, but are we going to pay the price for Keenan? He's, he's so expensive. Or save a few bucks and go down to, Devon, to Devante. And to me, saving, the, saving a few bucks and Devante is the, is the safer route. Um, and Dante has tons of upside. Look at Drake London, 4,600. That just seems way too cheap for him. And we talked about Elijah Moore at 4,500 with his, his weird Flacco connection. He's wacko for Flacco and I'm <laughs> wacko for Elijah Moore. Jam him in. Devontae Adams is my number one receiver this week. Love that. You could go O'Connell, save a lot of money. Devante, good little stat, mini stack right there. And then you can like bounce back with a Hawkinson or something. Yeah, uh, with with the, some of these cheap guys, like you just just got an idea that I like a lot. A lot of these, some of these cheap guys, you go Aiden O'Connell with Devonte. You go Elijah Moore, some of the other. You could fit McCaffrey in exactly. So I love that as a lineup. I do like Keenan Allen this week, but as you mentioned, you can't play McCaffrey if you have Keenan Allen. So we'll be lighter on Keenan. I I don't think we fully fade him. He projects very well. Uh, Pittman has been awesome. Those are the, the top three top tier guys for me. Then Rice with Mahomes, he's like 5,600, and he's just been clicking with Mahomes, you know, getting receptions, getting in the end zone. I do like that connection that you could stack Mahomes with him and get a lot of exposure to Mahomes because he's a cheap receiver and still get some of these higher end guys. Garrett Wilson, very cheap this week. I know the Jets struggle on offense, but they do look for him all the time, trying to get him the ball, trying to get him going somehow in the offense, quick screen passes or whatever. So for that 
for that number, he might get if he gets in the end zone with three catches, he he hits his he hit his he hits his value, and he could pop, you know, and and break the slate. He's someone that can break the slate. And then there's three value plays. You mentioned two: Drake London, way too cheap. Elijah Moore, way too cheap. Then this name popped last week. He had like six catches for seventy yards, and he's only thirty five hundred. Jonathan Mingo is the number two in Carolina. Bryce Young is starting to go to him more. And you even like the Panthers this week in some banged up New Orleans team. I like Mingo to save some money. Tight end. I'm finally going with one of your favorite tight ends. I think he's a great player this week. Uh, I want you to go first and see if you can guess it. <clears throat> um, don't, look at, don't look at my names. There are four guys that are expensive. <laughs> And I think you got to really like one of those four expensive guys to pay the money. <clears throat> and so um, I just, I, my eyes were drawn down on the price, uh, down to Pitts, Kate Otten, and Conklin are my three cheap guys that um, I never like Kyle Pitts, but he's cheap <clears throat> in a good spot. And it, I just don't see, the, me personally, I don't see the need to pay up for one of those expensive guys this week. Um, one of them's going to pop. You know, it's just like guessing which of the of the four. This is unbelievable because I'm usually the one that says I don't like paying over, and yeah. then you're this week you're like all value. Yeah. We're, we're dynamic, and this week you need you should pay up for Hawkinson. Great spot against the Raiders uh, to pay up for Hawkinson. He's their number one guy without Jefferson. Is Jefferson going to play this? So week? we we're they, still waiting on that. They're really we don't know if he's gonna play. we do not know. It, it was supposed to be after the bye week. He was going to be ready to go. They're still in the playoff hunt. So if he does play, I like your idea of going to Conklin. I don't like Otten, but I can go Conklin. And Pitts, 3,500, like, we're playing him. Like, he's my number two. If you're, and then I do like Cole Komet a little bit. Uh, Fields is number two guy behind DJ Moore. He's their second uh, best receiver. So those are my three, Huggison, Pitts, Komet. But I don't hate Conklin. I think we should have a lot of him as well. And I'm sure we'll throw in Otten because he's so cheap. But I like for what it's worth, I like Conklin better than I. Let's get to our locks of the week. And we have to apologize. It's on all of us. For Survivor, Fitz took the Chargers. But he already took the Chargers. So he hits me up in a panic. Right before the 1 o'clock games. Oh my gosh, I've already taken the Chargers. What do I do? I said, who's your backup? He goes, Texans. All right, we'll plug them in. You, thank God you haven't taken the Texans. And guess what the Texans did? Got that stop at the end. They won. won. Fitz is still hanging around. Unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Who would have thought I would take the Chargers twice of all? <laughs> and it would have been great, too, in that 6 nothing battle right. with the Patriots. The Patriots, like, moved the ball very well, and they just couldn't put it in the end zone or score. So you won. You survived. Texans. So I, want, I, want, I can't wait to see who you picked this week because you said you didn't like it. We'll see that in a second. But let's go to the locks. Denny is 8-4-1. Another win. Minus 9.5 Dolphins against the Commanders. Thank goodness Commanders have a bye this week. The Dolphins blow out the Commanders. Tyreek Hill is unbelievable. Tua is unbelievable. Who are we going with this week, Denny? I was actually considering the Browns. I know I didn't pick them in my three. I'm still betting the Browns for the same reasons you guys are. But for my lock, give me Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers getting five and a half. Ooh, yeah, and because I know what you're going to say soon, I, let's hope they lose, but by less than five and a half. Is that fair? Yeah, fair. Ooh, teaser, teaser. I'm going to go. Go ahead. I'm ten and three. If anyone cares, no big deal. No big deal. I hit a teaser last week. Lions plus two. Texans plus two and a half. That was never a doubt. Getting that stop at the end. Panthers plus 11. Boom. Nice hit. For me, I'm going with another one. Another one. Rams plus 13 and a half. Texans are plus two and a half. And Colts are plus seven and a half. So I'm just taking my three favorite bets and getting them as all dogs. The NFL is a great way. To take teasers. Teasers are the thing yeah, in the agree. NFL. I agree. If you want to make some money. Yep. So it's been working. Let's do it again. That's my teaser for this week. Now, Fitz, 
he'll talk about this. He's two and eleven in his locks, but we have called this segment now Fave Fit. So he's actually I like to say I'm seven and six. <laughs> <laughs> seven and six, because if you are fading them like he took Eagles money line against his 49ers, he said, you know, it was an emotional hedge. I want the 49ers to win. But I want to take the Eagles to help y'all out. You should have taken the Niners money line. They did they they won, right? They yeah. look so damn good. So damn good. Fitz, here we go. How are we feeling? Uh, not feeling great. I I, think, <laughs> I am going to switch it up this week, though, so everyone's on notice. This is actually not a fade. This is a true lock. Uh, you can't fool the gambling gods, so I have to announce this. So uh, give me the Ravens minus four and a half first half. I think it's going to be they're coming off a bye. They're well rested. They're at home. Might be a little bit of weather. I've got some stats here for you. The Ravens are 10 and 2 against the spread in the first half. Lamar Jackson is 66% against the spread in the first half in his career. That's enough for me. <laughs> Love it. Survivor. Ooh, going to Nolens. Jameis Winston and the boys. That's a gross one. If, if, if They also need this win. If me selecting the Chargers twice didn't technically knock me out, this one certainly will. <laughs> so, yeah, it's certainly the the Panthers are just bad. They had their their game last week where they they were going to get up for the for the interim coach and they fell a little little flat, a little short there. So I think the uh, I think the Saints get it done at home. All right, Saints, my man. We are going to talk a little bit about cards here in a second, but save twenty percent. At Market Movers, after a free 14-day trial, visit marketmoversapp.com and use the promo code NOOFFSEASON. All right, fellas, we are in the pretty much towards the end of the NFL season. The NBA is getting on its way. They just had the uh, in-season tournament where the championships Pacers, Lakers, interesting. So Halliburton looks great. And then baseball off season. So what are we doing with cards, especially his, his, NFL? Yeah, his, since we're talking about NFL, this time of year is just a great time to buy cards. Uh, we've said basically between Thanksgiving and Christmas is is a time when the market is usually down, and it's down because people are dumping cards in order to buy Christmas gifts. And that sounds silly. That that affects the market. Uh, people are starting. Aren't really watching NBA as much. It's interesting this year. Then the turn in, in season tournament, they're giving some uh, uh, giving you a reason to maybe watch. People don't start watching NBA as much until after uh, Christmas. And ba- no one's talking about baseball right now, unless you're talking about Soto, right? The trade. So I think it's a great time to sell Soto right now. We're looking at uh, Juan Soto's rookie uh, refractor from Tops PSA ten last month. I think the peak was like seven hundred dollars. Did you see what it is? They just sold for twelve forty. Woo! <laughs> it's the Yankees. It's yeah. the Yankees market. Yeah. What's well, hype, right? I mean, hype is yeah. it drives a lot of things. And no, you know the the this time of year, it, people are watching football, obviously, but it, it's the time of year where the card values go down. So I don't buy much in season mini sports like to buy in the dead of the off season and sell when the hype cycle hits. But if you're buying football, I think you could probably snag some deals. If you believe in Josh Allen and Justin Herbert, their prices are down because of the team's performance. Uh, I really think on Herbert, if the coach gets fired, that's the play you buy Herbert. Now when the, when the coach gets fired and they hire someone else, and if that someone else gives you hope, I've heard people rumor Bill Belichick or, or Jim Harbaugh, Ooh. Just think about that. Like one of those hires, you would be optimistic about more optimistic about Justin Herbert and the Chargers, and that's a good time to sell. Um, I, I do think Bryce Young is a great buy low opportunity yeah. because it's what's going to happen. They're going to stink this year. They've been stinking. That's fine. They're not going to bench him in the off season. You're going to see a couple of videos of him looking good. He's improved. Blah blah blah. And you could sell him at the beginning of next season. And then C.J. Stroud is very interesting. It's like, is he a sell, a hold, or a buy? I yeah. think you could make an argument from us all three of those. He's a sell because he's playing really well and people want him, so you can get some value out of him. He's a hold because you might want to have it a long time, and if you're buying it, I think you're buying it <clears throat> really for the long term, like you're buying it for five years. And uh, I think he's just a great young talent. 
Purdy's too expensive for me. Obviously, I'm out on that. Until today at 1 p.m. when we hit a Purdy out of the flawless. Yeah, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to sell it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Well, let's go, baby. Uh, Purdy is um, so I, Fitz but, has all the Purdy's in the world. Yeah. Tom Brady, was he too expensive in 2002 before his first Super Bowl? Um, Purdy hasn't even won one yet. So imagine what his price will be after he wins the seventh. It'll go up at least. How many parties do you have, Fitz? A lot. What's your collection? Ballpark um, it. We're waiting on. We're waiting on the big one, the green from Mikey Bangers to come back. Um, Is that yours or a shot? That's mine. You bought it from. Him? Nice. Always put myself before the shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Denny over there. <laughs> oh well, Denny told me that proc pretty was too expensive for the shop, so I had to. Go wow, there. and then he also he's talking about we should buy low on Josh Allen. He's like. We're passing on Josh Allen yesterday. I was like, I'm buying him. Yeah. Remember when- all of that is true. We were, t- <laughs> we were talking about, like, three weeks ago, we were talking about Purdy and the MVP odds. And we're like, wow, it's like, oh, yeah, you were like, odds are really long for, like, a team that's like, they, it's always the best qu- or the quarterback on one of the best teams, right? Mm-hmm. So it was 18 to one, and now he's three to one. And, and you I couldn't could, find we it. couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. I looked like three or four books, and they, I could not find MVP odds. It was bizarre. Uh, so that was a bummer. So I didn't get on that, but we'll use the cards as leverage. But I also like, I don't mind taking like a stab on Dak just because, I mean, if I know a lot of people don't believe in Dak and he might, he's a regular season hero and playoffs come and they stumble. But if they are what they've shown, they've been the last couple of weeks. And if they do advance and knock off the Niners or knock off the Eagles and they're in the Super Bowl, with the Cowboys market, his cards are, I know it's already, he's already on an uptick right now. His, his cards are selling fine, but. He has some room. Yeah, and it, they, the Cowboys specifically have done this to me three yeah. basically years in a row. At this point in the season, mm-hmm. you have all this hope, and then they find a way to – and you're like, is this the year they – over? I, mean, I thought it was the last couple of right. years. I thought this was the year. You know, I, I was long on the Bills and long on the Cowboys, and they both broke my heart. And it's, it's hard for me to do that again with Dak, but you're, you're right. If they, if, they, if they just – even if they just get to the NFC Championship game, I think he goes up. I mean, if he gets the Super Bowl, they're going to skyrocket. Oh, yeah. I mean, he has to get through the Eagles and Niners, so we'll see. Well, this could be all for today. Good luck with your bets. Thanks to our listeners for riding with Graybos. And be sure to tune in next time. Leave us that big five-star review and comment on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you listen. Be sure to check out com for all our information, links to our Discord, etc. Thanks for riding with Graybos. We out. Part of the nooffseason.com sports card network. Giblets. Closed eyes when I go to sleep, I don't see sheep, see dollar signs. Hundred dog got him beat the eyes for the hundredth time at a money line. Brock Purdy was irrelevant, now I'm at the front like a cutting line. G5 to the power five, Grey was on fire like a summertime. I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Degenerate, yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window? I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Degenerate, yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window?